What I was saying is that I'd always like to answer in a clear-cut manner, a straightforward manner to any such questions. Let me say straight and forward that my answer cannot be that much articulated, uh, but maybe so as to avoid excessive doubts, let me say immediately that uh, there is an ongoing encouraging recovery in Italy, and this is to eliminate doubts. Uh, Whenever I say that the answer has to be a little bit more articulated, what I refer to is that there are some factors that justify the trust and the optimism and the confidence. Uh, that is a sort of framework uh, factors. Uh, for example, the drop in the price of energy, the financial conditions, and uh, we are obviously thinking of the fact that today we have a possibility on the side of banks, and maybe we could come back to this aspect later on, so possibility of banks to grant loans and credit uh, at extremely advantageous conditions uh, to the businesses and to the enterprises. Let's consider to the spread that was reduced. And uh, all of these factors uh, are the factors that make me say that this is the ideal condition so as to have this recovery that allows this recovery. Now, let's talk about factors that are in motion, that have been set in motion, but with respect to which there are still reserves as to the actual capacity of any such factors to generate that strong recovery, which is indispensable and uh, that should absolutely stem out and come from this uh, recovery season. The recovery is there under our eyes. We have to trust future times so as to allow the recovery to become a consolidated uh, pr process and to become even more deep-rooted. Now, let's take a look at the factors. In the first place, we know that in the course of these years that have been uh, difficult, I'd say, the system, the economic system, the productive system of Italy was protecting itself and defending itself, especially thanks to the ability and the capacity of some businesses, Italian businesses, Italian enterprises, to find important uh, uh, positions abroad, which was the tr great merit of the Italian entrepreneurs and which allowed the same businesses and enterprises to find a solution to the problem of an Italian market, of Italian consumptions that were reduced. So the situation was always showing an imbalance between companies uh, that in the Italian market were having a situation of difficulties and other companies that were to find the niche positions abroad and which were basically connotated by sales that were foreign sales. Let's say that maybe it was difficult for an Italian company that did not have sales amounting to some 70% abroad to obtain and to gain positive results. Now, quite obviously, this is a very stable factor, a final one, which in future years will also entail uh, some actions. But if we do not activate uh, the internal market uh, and uh, bring it back to life, uh, by this I mean the availability on the side of consumers uh, to still believe, look at the future and with eyes that believe in it. Uh, I think that uh, this is the fundamental factor. And there are things that have to be consolidated, that have to take place in order to believe in the fact that uh, out of this very shy recovery, out of the very figures that uh, are now appearing, we could have a solid and sound recovery which grants uh, some future results. And I would like to say three points in particular. Two of them are closely interconnected. 
what I said is that uh, we should have uh, new confidence. Uh, we should place new confidence into the Italian market. Uh, and this means trust on the side of consumers, of the, on the side of households, uh, in order to overcome a, a phase that lasted for a long time, which was marked by lack of confidence, uh, by distrust. And here there are some paradoxical aspects. Uh, because on the one side, we said that uh, this ability to save is uh, typical of Italians. Uh, it's a great capacity of Italians. Now, I believe that we should overcome the prudence uh, that made people adopt a saving stance. So the confidence of the Italian consumers, of the Italian market, and make them believe again in uh, the possibility of spending once again in the market is of paramount importance. In the past six years, uh, we've seen these signs. Uh, we've seen signs that are now becoming more and more consolidated. And I believe that this uh, is closely interconnected with the problem of the ability, decision-making um, possibilities of, on the side of entrepreneurs of investing investing in Italy as well. Now the two things are closely intertwined one with another and we can't just ask entrepreneurs to invest in Italy if they cannot count upon a consumer market uh, or a consumption oriented market uh, because the two things are connected. And as to the two elements, uh, this is where the big match will have to be played. Then there is another sector, a third sector, which is the one of reforms. This is another positive factor, and I, here I'm referring to the many reforms that have been uh, undertaken and adopted. The reforms undoubtedly stand as a positive factor. We then have to consider political considerations, the right-hand side, the left-hand side. But apart from that, something was done and was launched, I mean, was started. This uh, gave, uh, brought to new t trends that are to be considered as positive, with respect to which sometimes uh, there are still are doubts. There are at least two fundamental doubts and problems uh, with respect to reforms that uh, will, I believe, if they, we're going to talk about other factors as well, which will bring about uh, two aspects in the reform sector. One has got to do with the justice reform. This is something that was dealt with uh, by whatever government, whether it be right-hand sided or left-hand sided. And usually these governments are very, very, uh, are having great difficulties in dealing with this because the willingness to invest and this is especially so on the side of foreigners to invest in Italy and if it is true that we've always had a negative consideration especially in the field of civil justice of incredible unacceptable sluggishness uh, and slowness, uh, then there is also another aspect which has to do with criminal justice. Uh, abroad, for example, the idea of coming in Italy and uh, uh, of being in, in the capacity of a CEO who may undergo some uh, legal actions uh, in a way which is not sufficiently controlled is one of uh, the many problems uh, and doubts that uh, are deeply nested in the minds of uh, any such investors. With this respect, uh, we would need uh, further impetus, uh, further action to be taken. Then there is another team. Uh, the second one is really truly essential without neglecting the ones that have already been uh, mentioned. Uh, and the second reform, as I was saying, is the fiscal one, which is also very much tax related. Uh, I don't want to get into the political realm, but the point and the discussion is uh, the one of uh, considering whether it's appropriate and correct uh, to start off uh, from a sort of uh, uh, release as far as uh, 
the real estate or the first uh, home owned by people. We know that there are divergent opinions, uh, especially with respect to the orientations adopted by the government on the side of Europe and uh, on the side of uh, consultants, advisors, scholars, experts, technicians, who say, well, this uh, intervention on uh, households and uh, house properties and ownership uh, is due to political interventions. We know that the property of uh, one's own house is uh, a widespread fact in Italy. And so the measures uh, over time uh, will generate some consequences. So it would be much better to have a further contribution having to do with production. So I think that these two reforms were lasting a bit too long. But these two reforms have to be completed, especially if we want to see that on the side of authorities a more important contribution is going to be given so as to allow for the recovery, which is, as I said, ongoing, but which still is very much fragile. This has got to do with a long-lasting recovery, uh, decidedly stronger. And uh, having said this, I'd like to say, and let me go back to what I was saying at the beginning, there are ongoing elements, there are data that allow us to say that this recovery is ongoing. Now, let me confine myself to just making mention of the final evidence, i.e. our own economist envisaged for the year 2016 a growth rate which is going to be exceeded by 1%. And instead, by the end of this year, we envisage an 0.8 growth rate. Now, I'd like to mention a last element that really impressed me favorably. This is something that's got to do with the Expo. As far as Italy is concerned, the Expo definitely had a positive influence. Uh, something which is not yet known, but I'd like to share it with you, is the following. We can envisage that the final data at the end of these two months that were of great success and that made me say that the Expo was uh, a successful event will make me say that if we have had some 21, 20 to 21 million participants and visitors. I did talk to the person in charge of uh, the Expo, the responsible one for the uh, Commissioner Sala is his name. And I asked him how could he break it down in between Italian visitors and uh, foreigners. And I was really, truly astonished. I'd say 50-50. No, 15 millions were Italians and only 6 millions were foreigners. We may make lots of uh, considerations and reflections uh, with respect to this uh, evidence, but let me make only the positive ones. Now, this tells us that there is a new dynamism on the side of Italian visitors and citizens. And if we add the fact that the prevalence of visitors was made up of young people, this is a very encouraging element, I would say. Thank you. Professor, вот как раз одна из, может быть, продолжение ваших слов, одна из особенностей итальянского итальянцев в том, что в то сложное время, когда у банков были тоже проблемы, насколько я знаю, многие итальянцы не забирали деньги из банков, тем самым. Um, that you can hear me now. Now the question was 
that many Italians uh, in uh, complex times, in any such complex times, did not uh, take their own savings, uh, did not withdraw savings from the banks. Uh, so from this point of view, they were favoring the system. And this is exactly maybe, uh, is this what's happening right now? What are the perspectives uh, that you can see? What are the prospects if we consider the effect uh, which in the current situation exists? Uh, and here I'm referring to the recovery hints and what this is provoking in the credit world and in the loan world. Let's make a distinction. The clients of the banks and the banks themselves, this is something that we have to separate. From the client's point of view, there are some elements that are only positive, very positive elements, because the condition of the credit market uh, is highly favorable. The rates are low. The large uh, liquidity that exists today is another element. And until a few months ago, it was said that the liquidity, the broad liquidity, was not matched by an adequate availability of money on the side of banks. Uh, because of a very simple reason, which was the cost of credit. Many of the questions of the clients could not be agreed upon because they would not allow for investment possibilities, which is the first condition that a banker has to respect whenever allowing for credits. Now the situation is improving. And I'd like to say that the reduction of uh, suffering and problems will allow for a very important thing, because it will allow to reserve with the reduced severity, reduced rigor, and to destine them to the recovery. And we already see some of the effects. The medium-term loans and the credits to enterprises are growing. The loans to families have been growing once again after some three to four years that they had gone into the negative side. Loans for residential purposes uh, and for research and development are more than doubled. So we've gone back to monthly uh, flows uh, that I would say are very well aligned with the ones that characterize the pre-crisis period. In the real estate sector, instead, there are elements which are more uncertain. We are talking about stabilization after a hedging of quotations and uh, defense of quotation period. But if this is applicable to prices, then I m must say that there is some movement and motion. Uh, something is moving in the sector of any such activities, banking activities. But now let's look at it from the angle of banks. I must say that quite obviously the possibility of allowing for a recovery of the profitability for banks, which was quite uh, sacrificed in past years, is depending on the success of the economy, on the fact that this recovery, initially shy, turns into something strong. I must say that this is uh, typical of a positive signal. I wouldn't want to refer to what uh, someone maybe may expect from a bank. You introduced me as a CEO of the Board of Managers. Maybe that will be for the future president of uh, the Board of Managers. I am just one of the CEOs of one of the two boards. And I am also the president of the Surveillance uh, Board. And uh, I am a chairman of the Supervisory Board. And I am referring to all of these uh, figures uh, while holding in great esteem and appreciations my colleagues. So from uh, the profitability point of view, I would say that it's enough to take a look at our industrial plan, business plan, which is uh, envisaging the remuneration to shareholders in terms of uh, dividends with uh, yearly increments and increases that are important and that we are respecting. We, I am not just referring to our own bank. I was rather referring to the five uh, largest uh, Italian banks. And their profitability has improved. 
with respect to a semester of this year as opposed to last year. The ROI uh, has was of about 6.3%. Last year, in the first semester, it was of 2.9%. And uh, this is something which is very important. I'm going back to a theme that I was hinting at before, which should be of great interest to the eyes of enterprises. That is uh, the write-offs uh, in terms of uh, the value of uh, uh, bad loans uh, have been uh, going down by 15, 16 percent almost. Uh, and if we consider the degree of uh, the exposure that we have and which makes us uh, wanting to compare ourselves constantly with the rest of Europe, so much so that we have to consider and we have to be aware whether all of the tests were made and the tests we know that were made and we know that they have generated results that we well know. But we must also be aware of the fact that the tests are going to be repeated. They have been announced, new tests have been announced and the bar is time after time being raised. But the capitalization level of banks has been growing up. I'm referring again to the five largest groups. In the second quarter, the common equity of the Italian Wanda ratio and the total capital ratio was equal to 11.8%, 12.4% and 15.4% of the weighted activities uh, and uh, this was one percentage point more than the, what we record uh, uh, what they registered in the month of March. Going back to what you were saying it seems that the picture is uh, positive I'd say. You probably will not deny that when uh, we talked uh, some three months ago we were talking about structural problems. Uh, we talked about the fact that the gap existing between poor countries uh, and was creating an imbalance uh, and uh, another problem uh, which was the one of uh, the conflict between the economic development uh, and the surrounding environment. Uh, so the protection of environment. So what should we do in order to move away from this dead point? So obviously I'm happy that you recall that previous meeting because that's when I was calling the attention on this uh, theme. This is one of the themes uh, upon which uh, for many years uh, since I did have the opportunity of reading highly expert uh, relations, highly qualified uh, reports of experts. Uh, that is to say, I'd say the most partial and neutral experts, I was strongly impressed, as I said. The moment will come that if no measures will be taken, strong measures, this will turn into the most severe problem ever facing humanity and mankind. Um, I used to say that before oil and energy sources, the problem of water is something that makes uh, survival, puts survival at stake, temperature. And here I'm thinking in, that in the southern hemisphere of the world, uh, there are the two thirds of the world population. This is again something which entails uh, great worries for survival. And unfortunately, this is what's come true because today there is no international summit which is not uh, putting at the top of its agenda the problem or the theme of uh, ecology. The environment is uh, of paramount importance, unfortunately. And uh, I'm saying this because there haven't been adequate uh, interventions and measures. The problem is very serious indeed, and we can see that out of the uh, horrible data uh, that have been produced as to the increase of uh, 
disparities. Uh, ever since the beginning, we've become very much aware on the basis of economic the theories that this is the fundamental element which will allow us to make forecasts uh, either one way or the other of development. Uh, this stands as the condition that uh, allows us to make a forecast about the future of economy. Now, I wanted to recall some of these data because they show how the globalization, the markets uh, have been favoring the richest countries and at the same time uh, was not attenuating as hoped uh, the distance of uh, countries uh, which were poor. In a report that was published at the end of the year 2013, uh, the United Nations uh, estimates that in the face of a population equal to 16% of the world's total, that is to say the countries having a population corresponding to 16% of uh, the world total number of population, well, these countries have and hold 55% of the overall income. They have uh, a per, uh, per capita income uh, equal to $14 US dollars. In the sub-Saharan sub Africa, instead, uh, we had some $27,640 of the European Union as opposed to the $41,000 of the North America. And these are highly impressive data. There is another document uh, which is entitled uh, Working for the Few, which was uh, issued by a non-governmental British organization. Oxfam um, holding that 1% of the worldwide population owns almost half of the world asset. Just 1%. And this is a mass of resources. And this is uh, something which is uh, owned by 1% people. And they own 110 trillion dollars. This is an indicator equal to 65 times the total of the assets and wealth owned by the poorest people. Now, this piece of data now makes it so that uh, the situation is uh, deteriorating so much so that by the year 2016, 1% of uh, the world population is going to be def definitely richer than the remaining 49%, 99%. And this is a way to answer to your question as to how to reconcile uh, the development with the pro protection of uh, natural goods. Unfortunately, the growth of uh, assets and wealth, which is not to the uniform advantage of the rest of the world is taking place at the price of a progressive deterioration of environment and its resources. Unfortunately, we have a limited time, dear Professor Bazzoli. So this is why I would like to In Russia, we have a, a fairy tale talking about a cat that uh, has stolen a cat, and he's been reproached by the owner. While uh, he's listening to the owner, he's also uh, lapping its milk, and the entire community is uh, now holding that something has to be done in order to save the environment and grant the development at the same time. So I'd like to ask you, what is it that we should be doing in order to uh, take uh, real steps? Are we to adopt sanctions uh, against those who breach uh, universal rules and violate them? How can we solve the problem? In the first place, let me say the following. The fundamental problem is that the progression of the deterioration which in the case, uh, in our case, entails the great problem of the overwarming of the, her the earth, 
with respect to which the globe, and we know that the global temperature is uh, destined to increase in an impressive manner. This is something that was known and understood only by a minority of people until now. The scientists, uh, and uh, the scientists only too often uh, say the contrary, exactly the contrary of uh, what many others uh, are saying. There is something that uh, can't be disregarded, which is a uh, strong uh, lobbying uh, activity, whereby there are strong interests. And let me just say that if the states were to destine to energy source researches, clean and renewable energy sources, uh, and if they were to devote part of the, their own budgets uh, to that purpose, we would definitely achieve extraordinary results, for sure. I cannot but think and remember what was the situation in which we were finding ourselves uh, some 50 years ago from the transportation point of view. Who could ever dream of the fact that today we could communicate at costs that are truly reduced? and low. So this is also a problem that entails the political willingness, the ability of overcoming the many resistances and obstacles that are being set by uh, state interests. So this is the true problem, or vested interest. So the true problem is not to, the one whereby we can stop, but rather slow down this progression. I believe that uh, everyone uh, has been reading on the newspapers, uh, since you did hint at that, and we now have a higher awareness, so we can consider all of the political interventions. We can consider undoubtedly other kinds of measures, uh, even the intervention made by the pontiff, uh, who recalled this fundamental problem. Recently, we all read about two very important facts. One had to do with the agreement, the agreement between China and the United States, the well-known most polluting powers. I, well, I believe that this is a true factor that needs to be considered. We have to consider what has been envisaged and uh, foreseen. And if it is true that the global temperature, if we do not intervene, and if we don't take due measure by the year 2100 that will lead to an increase by four degrees past uh, the uh, pre-industrial levels, uh, well, this is what would bring about catastrophic consequences for the entire mankind and humankind. So we would have to have a reduction of this increase, and we always constantly refer to increase, unfortunately, which is uh, going to be kept at less than 2%. And still, the consequences would be very severe, yet uh, controllable. And uh, the large changes, the large commitments and uh, research activities in the field of renewable sources is what we should be doing in order to overcome the political reasons. So great hopes have been uh, placed in the hands of a conference that should be taking place in Paris uh, in the month of December the next. And also the possibility of having some agreements amongst the uh, powers. So, this means that I have to make another question. What could then be the contribution given by the United Nations in this case? The contribution of the United Nations in order to solve this problem of uh, Banca Intesa. We've uh, been very sensitive to this. Uh, you probably know that the budgets of our own banks are always matched by the so-called social budget. And the social budget envisages this theme. The protection of uh, the environment uh, is one presence, a constant presence. In other words, we consider it as a fundamental part of our own activity the 
necessity to have a strategy which is an environmental strategy. So the climate, the ecology hold a central pivotal point, aspect. We've uh, conceived some uh, environmental policies and energy policies which have to be referred to the direct impacts, but also to the indirect impacts. We want to evaluate the risks and opportunities that have got to do with the environmental themes. And here again, the problem is a problem of balance, a balance existing or an equilibrium between uh, advantages and disadvantages, convenience and lack of convenience. And if there is a problem in balance, it's hard to find it. The important thing is to find the willingness and the commitment to find it. Now, obviously, this is the last uh, information I can give you. We've uh, committed ourselves uh, to look at the sustainable development. We've been joining uh, to in the international cultural initiatives, one of which is the Global Compact. These are the initiatives uh, aiming at uh, directing the dialogue uh, at the supranational level in order to have some respect uh, and protection of the environment. Now, as you probably know, I was talking about these subjects many years ago, and I feel that I am truly committed in all this. I must also say that this is a very broad subject a very broad theme, which would deserve longer discussions. And uh, it's not always the case that you meet a banker who's uh, interested in any such themes. Yes, I am a very special banker, probably. And I always, uh, and I apologize for this, because it's well known to almost everyone, that I don't know whether I should uh, become shy but I think that uh, more than 33 years ago, I accepted the pressure of Ciampi, the governor, and Minister Andreata to take upon the presidency of the um, Banco Ambrosiano. I was very much reluctant because at that time I was not a banker. I was a lawyer, a professor, a university professor who was happy and who was also very much uh, involved in the activities he was carrying out with great passion. Ciampi, the governor Ciampi, when I said I didn't even graduate in economics, uh, he said, well, I graduated in humanities. So from this point of view, having a legal background is what made me be more sensitive to some aspects of the economic activity which I believe aren't alien, but rather essential, so as to allow for the economic activity to be truly and uh, uh, truly developed uh, in a long-lasting manner. Thank you.